Hey, Facebook live stream viewers, welcome to 1130 at 1130, Highlights from the Silver Linings Playbook, here with Paula Shaw. And those of you who've been with us a while know, I started doing this, wow, I'm thinking I'm going on two or three weeks now, I'm going to have to find out what the actual first date was. But uh, back in the beginning, when so much was bad news and everybody was just freaking out, I decided that something needed to happen to bring some good news uh, on, out to people every single day. And I'm thrilled to see that the idea is catching on. I just literally watched the second episode of John Krasinski's Some Good News, which you can find on YouTube. Absolutely wonderful. Um, it's just, you know... Bringing good news to the people has been long overdue. And if that's one of the great outcomes that happens with this virus situation, that will be a really great outcome. So, a couple of things I want to talk about today. We are going to talk in just a few minutes about what to say when you don't know what to say. Saying the right thing when you don't know what to say, which is actually a book I wrote. And I'm going to be sharing a little bit with you from this book because this is a time when people don't know exactly the right things to always say to people. I've, I've mentioned before that we are a world of grievers right now because we've all lost life as we knew it. And so it's a time for conversations that matter. It's a time for saying things that might help somebody soothe them or comfort them or help them not feel so alone. So we're going to get into that in just a minute. I hope you'll stay with us. But first, I did want to share some good news. Um, I have to tell you, I, I had to make a market run this morning. And I don't know about the rest of you, but going to the market these days is like this surreal 3D experience. You know, I'm either having flashbacks of episodes of Grey's Anatomy or Marcus Welby or some other medical show because we're all in surgical masks, or it, it makes you feel like you're back in Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid movie, you know, with everybody in their bandanas. We all look like banditos. And so I'm having to keep my sense of humor about me when I go to the market because it's kind of grim, you know? I mean, people aren't laughing and smiling as much as they used to. So, as I mentioned a few days back, I think it's important that all of us, even though my son pointed out to me that nobody can see if you're smiling when you're wearing your mask, but you know, and there's an energy about smiling that's really fabulous. So, I think that it's important that we all do that. Oh my goodness, I just realized I forgot to set my timer and I always promise you, only 11 minutes and 30 seconds, so I'm going to do it right now and take a couple of minutes off and assume that I've been talking to you for a couple of minutes. Um, so that was my market experience. But I um, also want to remind all of you that my nephew, Patrick Gutman, will be doing another sound bath concert with the Crystal Bowls tonight. This is Tuesday. It'll be tonight at 8 o'clock. He and his partner are doing it every Tuesday night at 8 o'clock. And I'm finding it a great way to wind down, relax, and then just after that, drift off to bed. So I will put the link for Patrick Sound Bath Concert on this page after we're done uh, visiting together this morning. All right, let's see. Oh, some other good news from around the world. John Krasinski on Some Good News, his latest episode, shared some wonderful things that I wanted to share with you. And one is that, you know, people were saying, well, what, what's needed now? How can we help? And of course, what the healthcare workers were sharing is they need supplies. So um, in Pennsylvania, the Fanatics Baseball Company stopped production of baseball uniforms and they are now making masks and gowns for the healthcare workers and donating them. That's pretty cool, isn't it? And then not to be um, overplayed, ho the hockey manufacturer Bauer 
started making protective face shields, which are really cool. There's like a band here and then a plastic piece that comes down that's a helpful in addition to the mask, which would really hold out any droplets, you know, that were containing virus. And they are donating them. And then they didn't want to be outshined, so uh, apparently a million N95 masks were flown in on the Patriots private jet. So we got football, baseball, and hockey all contributing to help the people who need the help during this virus. I thought that was really, really fabulous. All right, so one of the things that I said we were going to talk about today is saying the right thing when you don't know what to say. And, and that's a tricky thing for all of us humans because we're very good at talking about the latest trend or fashion or who won the game last night, though we don't have that to talk about anymore, do we? Um, but we're, we're not so good when it comes to having difficult conversations talking with people who are in difficult circumstances. So today I decided I'm going to share some actual s statements with you of things that are helpful to say to somebody who's going through a tough time, whether that's because of being quarantined or a death or a divorce, or perhaps they lost their job, they may be scared about finances, we are dealing with grief on so many different levels right now. And we need to be there for each other in a more important way than saying, hey, it's gonna be all right, or we're all in this together, and you know, there'll be, there'll be bright days ahead. Those are all probably true statements, but they aren't necessarily helpful when somebody's heart is hurting. So let's talk about the kinds of things that are helpful when somebody's heart is hurting. So first of all, if I'm hurting from my heart, if you come to me with knowledge from your head or some catchphrase from your head, that's not going to be very helpful for me. I need to feel like you're somehow relating to me with your humanity, with similar experience or understanding of what I'm going through. So, and the other thing you really want is don't ask yes and no questions. Ask questions that might prompt a person to actually talk about what they're feeling because that's the kind of processing that actually helps a person to move through feelings and feel better. So here are some statements that could be helpful to say if you're talking to someone who is in a tough place. So first of all, what happened or what's going on? I'm so sorry you're going through this. What's it like for you? See, that encourages conversation, not just yes or no. This must be a confusing and incredibly complicated time. Boy, that's a good one for right now, isn't it? How is it going for you? You might add to that. And remember, if somebody's going through something really tough, Sometimes one of the most helpful things you can do is just say, I don't even know what to say. I just, my heart aches for you. And I, I'm happy to listen to anything you want to talk about. You know, when, when things are different, it's great to say, how about you don't even have to talk. We can just sit together and watch a movie. Well, we can't do that so much right now, but we can hang out on Zoom together or on Skype or even FaceTime and watch that movie together. Or maybe talk a little bit, maybe not. But just let's, let's try to set the small talk aside for a while and make every conversation count. Just go into a conversation already knowing that your friend, your family member, your loved one has, is going through a tough time right now. So don't, don't settle for trivial phrases. Say something that matters. Let me give you a few more. I certainly can't know exactly how your pain feels, but I, but I remember when, and then you give a brief example of something you've gone through. So they feel there's a camaraderie, that you get it. 
Um, this can be such a lonely time. How's it going for you? And then talking about, gosh, you know, I remember when, maybe I remember when what? We were all getting together for barbecues. You know, I can't wait till that happens again. What about you? Um, and then I, I love this one too. Don't worry. I'm not going to tell you that everything happens for a reason. Right now, I'm sure you just feel that this sucks. You know, saying things that are people realities rather than some catchphrase, phrase like, well, this too shall come again, or this too shall pass, or, you know what I mean? Let's put the catchphrases aside and let's just speak to each other. Even if all we have to say is, I wish I could think of something to say to you that was more helpful. Or, listen, I know you must be lonely. Or, are you getting up to here with alone time? So those kinds of things can be especially helpful. And by the way, if any of you would like a list, um, it's in, there are lists of things to say, things not to say. We're going to talk about those tomorrow. Both in this book, Saying the Right Thing When You Don't Know What to Say, and also in my grief book, Grief, When Will This Pain Ever End? But if you don't feel like ordering those books on Amazon, you can go to paulashaw.com and I give you a list of 20 things to say and not to say free. You can just, uh, you'll see right there on the website that you can put your email address in and that list will be downloaded to you. Could be a very handy thing to have at this time in our lives. So feel free to take advantage of that offer. It is on paulashaw.com. And I want to end today with something that I read that I thought was so beautiful and so true. And this is it. I think that when the dust settles, we will realize how little we need, how very much we actually have, and the value of human connection. I think that's what we're all finding out, aren't we? Through Zoom, chats with people we haven't talked to in a long time, getting on the phone, FaceTime, just we're all realizing that what really matters the most is human connection. That's what's going to sustain us through this that's the biggest gift of this, the, the new level of valuing human connection. So let's all be there for each other. I have been following my own advice. I think I mentioned yesterday, my neighbors and I are out on the porch at eight o'clock clapping and cheering for the, the nurses and doctors and first line responders. Uh, I have been reaching out to old friends, have done some Zoom chats, some phone chats. So make a point of doing that. Talk to at least one person today you haven't talked to in a while. Make this day count. Make this time count. We're all going to be better on the other side of it, even though sometimes in the middle it may suck. But we have each other. So let's be there for each other. All right. I will be here for you again tomorrow morning at 11.30 for 11.30. And tomorrow we're going to talk about what are some of the things we don't want to say when someone is hurting. All right, now I'm going to indulge myself one more time before I say goodbye and just see who's here. And oh, Daniela, hi, honey. <laughs> You warned us in the beginning. Oh, I'm so glad to see you. Oh, and Marissa. Hey, buddy. And Monel, Chuck. Oh, my mom's on. Hey, mom and dad. <laughs> all right, guys. I love you all. Thank you for being here. And I'll see you tomorrow morning at 1130 for 1130. Take care.